model city, if ever there was one. This, though, is a mockery. This is Jerusalem the Golden, the Jerusalem that King Solomon conceived in all its splendor, reconstructed in the cracked and broken Jerusalem of today. This is wishful thinking, or nostalgia, or sheer irony. Jerusalem, the Jewish Holy of Holies, which went on to cradle Christianity and after sacking to become the place where Muhammad rose to his Arabic heaven in his turn. How could Jerusalem have failed to become the split and divided center of a modern world in desperate disunity? Almost 200,000 Jews inhabit this torn off section of a city which is at war with itself. Religious fanatics naturally are among the million scattered Jews who returned to their promised land. And even friendly cameramen are spurned in this capital, which became a cauldron of hate when Palestine was divided between Arab and Jew in 1948, because it was cut in two so implacably that a stranger is regarded as an enemy on either side. Yet this is the site of King David's tomb, Jerusalem's Jewish founder, who figured biblically in the whole background of both Christianity and the Muslim faith. Tragic the way today David's great city should be both a center of piety and passionate strife. The Last Supper was served here, they say, when Christ taught the world what the world has since forgotten, to share and communicate. Maybe the ornate trimmings that fervent believers bequeathed to these holy places masked the simplicity of the original message of love that Mary's boy child gave. Certainly Jerusalem has been either a battlefield or an uneasy center of discordant splinter groups since long before Christ was born or crucified on a cross, which they claim was made from a tree that grew on this very spot. In that museum they housed the Dead Sea Scrolls, ancient heritage of both Jew and Christian, discovered in Bedouin country, preserved but always threatened by the blindness of frontline guns. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Those scrolls allude to the conflict of good and evil, truth and falsehood. Their title, the Book of War. And what a deceivingly peaceful place for them to be lodged, because that wall was built as a frontier between enemies. Peace here is a false impression, because it simply asserts itself between armies which, when not in action, are actively alert across a no-man's land of barbed wire, bitterness, and non-coexistence. A city split completely. Elsewhere, there is parleying and even partnership between the creeds and races and nations. Here, passion proves too great, because here there are monuments to the very atavistic roots that tear people apart. That Dome of the Rock has been both a Christian church and a Muslim shrine. The king of Jordan was given sovereignty here, where Abram prepared to sacrifice his son Isaac, where Solomon built his temple, and where later Mohammed spiritually rose to heaven to commune with the earlier prophets, among whom he acknowledged Jesus. Yet in this civilized day and age, even though Jordan has a westernized king of great culture and humanity, this holy city, which should be emulsive, is explosive. Why can't Jerusalem belong to all of us, Arab, Christian, Jew, and Hindu too, if he likes? Because here's a place in Jordan that only fervent Jews want, the Wailing Wall, where they were wont to pray and where the last stones of Solomon's great temple survive. This wall also contains stones that Herod laid. Jews used to nail their prayers for the restoration of their temple and kingdom into it. Here, now a school courtyard, Pilate washed his hands of responsibility for Jesus' death. The Jerusalem Jesus knew doesn't change all that much. It was through streets very much as today's Good Friday pilgrims know them that he carried his cross, and there's still strife. This is the way of the cross, all right. In Jordan too, and this should in all conscience belong to Orthodox Jewry, the Garden of Gethsemane, where Christ was betrayed by Judas Iscariot. The olives here, tree experts agree, come from the same root systems that were there when Jesus was alive. The garden is still a garden of grief and uncertainty. An additional irony too, inasmuch as the olive branch is the accepted emblem of peace.
Why has this meeting place of different creeds dwelling on life everlasting always been such a stumbling block to peace? King Hussein, educated in England, is an Arab ruler who could always mix harmoniously with men of all races. He is as much a victim as anyone of the so far insoluble ironies that in particular Jerusalem presents. For consider the effect on city life, where a no man's land corridor like this was superimposed on everyday existence. This was a frontier from the start that you could only cross one way, irrevocably. Welcome, yes, but no return, no cross-channel contact. One-way traffic and no compromise, no understanding, no give and take, and human beings left to enforce such inhumanity. Emotion never knew a frontier like this. Intellect balks at the idea. Religion should have made it nonsensical. Jerusalem, hadst thou but known. This split city today tells us the story of a thousand turbulent yesterdays. But what does it tell us of tomorrow except dread? Is there some hope in youthful innocence? Turning swords into plowshares here the modern way could mean making goalposts out of frontier tank traps. <laughs>